So this is some more voltage pin troubleshooting. We have a Maytag washer that just won't do anything. Acts like it's dead. Won't fill, won't spin, won't do anything. So using a voltage pen, I'm going to follow this circuit here. I want to determine right here. This is where your hot should be here. Through here. It's going to come through here. I'm going to go through the door switch. This has nothing to do with the timer here yet. I'm go through the door switch and back to the timer. So these are the brown wires here. I'm going to check the presence of hot. I've already checked this, by the way. This is good. So I'm going to check the presence of hot here. The door switch is closed. L1 is returning back to the timer. So we have L1 at the timer here. And we've got it there. If any of these contacts right here are good, we should get L1 here at the gray wire on the pressure switch. So let's check that. All right, so we got the pressure switch right there, gray wire. We've got that. And we've got it coming out of the blue, which means the pressure switch is working too. So we've got it. That one actually has made it all the way through here. So it's made it through that portion of the timer to the water selection switch. And it's going to go through this water selection switch back through the timer. And it's going to come out, end up at the hot water valves. So hot or cold water valves. So if I've got anything on the right here, if I've got anything on the pink or the purple wires going out of the timer, then we know that that's good too. And that we and we should have water flowing. Provided that we have neutral right there. We'll find that out too. So the pink and the purple wires coming out of the timer. Both of those have line voltage. So now L1 is making it all the way through here to these valves. Now what about neutral? Well, neutral should go through the timer. And it's hardwired in the timer, so the timer doesn't select neutral. And it comes back to here in the motor to this thermal overload in the motor. So we should have neutral right here. We should have neutral. If we don't have neutral right there, if this is open, we're going to read line voltage here because line voltage is going to make it through and the voltage is going to appear always across the highest impedance in a circuit. And the highest impedance in the circuit, if this is open, where you have some loose wire at the motor, if you have neutral is not making it through the motor over here, this is going to be infinity ohms. Hence the highest impedance in the circuit, and you're going to read hot right here where you should have neutral. So that was going to be the white yellow wire. This is the white yellow wire right here. Now we are reading hot right there where we should have neutral. So I'm going to go ahead and investigate. I'm going to look at the motor. See if we have an open thermal cutoff or just a you know bad wiring harness or something right here. So I'm going to check that. So I'm going to inspect the motor here. So what we're trying to do here is determine whether you have neutral right here. If you have neutral appearing here, then you're going to have no voltage. You're not going to get a reading. 
And if you get a reading here, right here, this is the yellow white wire right there. If you get a reading right there, that means you got 120 volts from here to here, which it means that that thermal cutoff is bad. It's open. So if you get no reading here and a reading here, that's what we have. So this is your white wire neutral right here. You have no reading right there, no reading. So we've got no reading. So you got zero volts right there. Now I'm going to check this right here, this yellow white wire. If we get a reading, then we get an open thermal cutoff and a bad motor. This is your, so the rest of the video got cut off. This is a result here of what happened. So L1, again, was making it through the timer. It was getting to the pressure switch. It was appearing through here and making it through the water temperature switch, and it was, L1 was coming through here, since we had it on warm, and through here, to both the hot and cold water valves. Now, normally, what you would expect in this Part of the cycle is for these valves to be energized, you would have neutral over here on the right side of these valves. But that's not what we had. We actually had L1 over here. And the reason, well, so we were detecting L1 over here, and this was right here. This uh, is connected to the timer. It's coming back through this way. And L1 was appearing right here and L1 was appearing right here. But we had nothing on the left side of this thermal cutoff. Nothing on the left side of that. I'm gonna use blue for neutral. This is our neutral here. It was making here, but it was not making here. So we were getting a reading on this side of the circuit of the thermal cutoff. We were not getting a reading over here. That means we have neutral here, and L1 here, which means that there is 120 volts across this thermal uh, overload inside the motor. But you cannot have, if that thermal overload is closed like it should be, there's no way you can have 120 volts across it. So that thermal overload is open and we're gonna have to replace this whole motor in order to resolve it. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.